Our text this morning is taken from John chapter 1. John chapter 1. Verse 6 to 8. Amen. John chapter 1. Amen. In the beginning was the word and the verses six six to eight. Sorry. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. This man came for a witness to bear. This man came whose name was John. This man came a witness to bear witness of light that all through him might believe. Verse 8, he was not that light, but was sent to bear witness of that light. Yes, John the Baptist was sent to bear witness, to tell the world that there is somebody, the Messiah is coming, that is not me. Most of us will come here and say the Messiah is coming. When people start acknowledging who is the Messiah, some of us will claim, yes, it's me. That no, he came to announce the coming of the Messiah and he stood by it. Amen. Praise the Lord. First, no, 15 to 36. Amen. John 1 15 to 36. John testified concerning him. He cried out, saying, This was he of whom I said. He who comes after me has surpassed me because he was before me. From the fullness of his grace, we have all received one blessing after another. For the Lord was given through Moses, grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. No one has ever seen God, but God the one and only who is at the Father's side has made him known. Now, this was John's testimony when the Jews of Jerusalem sent priests and Levites to ask him who he was. He did not fail to confess, but confessed freely, I'm not the Christ. They asked him, then who are you? Are you Elijah? He said, I'm not. Are you the prophet? He answered, no. Finally, they said, who are you? Give us an answer to take back to those who sent you, sent us. What do you say about yourself? Amen. One second. Amen. The Jews sent people to John the Baptist to ask him, Oh, Adam, who are you? Are you Elijah, Elias? He said, No. Are you a prophet? He answered, No. They said, Then, who are you? If it's me and you, Okay, we are not the Messiah. Okay, let's and we are the prophets to gain popularity. No, he knew why he came, he knew his assignment just to announce the coming of Christ. And verse 23 said, He said, I am the voice of one crying in the wilderness. He was in the wilderness crying, make straight the way of the Lord. As saying the prophet Isaiah. Amen. Amen. That was what he told him. I am not Christ. I am not the prophet. I am not Elijah. I am the one crying day and night in the wilderness. Make straight the way of the Lord. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. As believers, let's just stay in the assignment God has given us. Let us not take somebody else's assignment. Okay, I prefer being a preacher. I prefer, no. If you are not called to be a preacher, you have no business preaching. Amen. John the Baptist stayed in his assignment. Praise the Lord. Amen. Verse 24. Now, some Pharisees who have been sent questioning 
Why then do you baptize? If you are not the Christ, nor Elijah, nor the prophet. Amen. They are still questioning, stressing him. Okay, if you say you are not Christ, you are not the prophet. Who are you? Why are you baptizing people? Amen. Praise the Lord. I baptize with water, John replied. But among you stand one you do not know. He is the one who comes after me, the tongues of whose sanders are not worthy to untie. This all happened at Bethany on the other side of the Jordan, where John was baptizing. The next day, John saw Jesus coming toward him and said, Look! The Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. This is the one I meant when I said, A man who comes after me has surpassed me because he was before me. I myself did not know him. Amen. Praise the Lord. When they continue to question him, he said, I'm telling you, he is the one who is coming after me and he will be preferred. You know, he will, you people will prefer him, the world will prefer him than me. Praise the Lord. They were like, we don't understand. And verse 29 said, the next day, John said Jesus coming unto him. He said, behold the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. Amen. Continue. This is he of whom I said, After me cometh a man who is preferred before me, for he was before me. This is the man I'm talking about. It was revealed because the dove. Continue, let me not judge you. Yes. Amen. Verse 31. I myself did not know him, but the reason I'm, I came baptizing with water was that he might be revealed to Israel. Then John gave this testimony. I saw the Spirit come down from heaven as a dove and remain on him. I would not have known him except that the one who sent me to baptize with water told me the man on whom you see the Spirit come down and remain is he who will baptize with the Holy Spirit. I have seen and I testify that this is the Son of God. The next day, John was there again with two of his disciples. When he saw Jesus passing by, he said, Look, the Lamb of God. Amen. Amen. For John the Baptist, that was the revelation he had. He never met Jesus. The first time they met was in the womb. When the mother, Elizabeth, was pregnant with John, old woman, past the age of pregnancy, but by revelation, he took him for John the Baptist. And when Mary, the mother of Jesus, was pregnant for Jesus, Elizabeth happened to be the cousin of Mary. That was the first visitation when Mary ran to Elizabeth for comfort. Immediately she got there. John in the womb leaped for John. Elizabeth said, the mother of my Savior has come to my house. That was the first contact. Immediately Jesus got into the house. The baby moved for the first time. We then we understand. Because we know the first time our babies move, that was the first time they met by revelation in the womb. Then the next time they met was in the physical. It's like John never met him, but by revelation they said, the man, the person, the dove, will descend upon his head. That is the Messiah. Amen. Praise the Lord by Revelation 33. I knew him not, but he sent me to baptize with water. The same said unto me, Upon whom thou shalt see the Spirit descending and remaineth on him. 
the same is he which baptizes with the Holy Ghost. And John the Baptist explained to him, I'm only baptizing you people with water. The Messiah I'm talking to you about will baptize you with the Holy Ghost, with fire. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. 34. And I saw the very record that this is the Son of God. Verse 35. And again, the next day, after John stood and two of his disciples, looking upon Jesus as he walked, he said, Behold the Lamb of God. Amen. Praise the Lord. Our next text is John 3. John chapter 3, verse 22 to 36. After this, Jesus and his disciples went out into the Judean countryside, where he spent some time with them and baptized. Now John also was baptizing at Enon near Salem, because there was plenty of water, and people were coming and being baptized. 24. This was before John was put in prison. An argument developed between some of John's disciples and a certain Jew over the matter of ceremonial washing. They came to John and said to him, Rabbi, that man who was with you on the other side of the Jordan, the one you testified about. Look, he is baptizing, and everyone is going to him. 27. To this John replied, A person can receive only what is given them from heaven. Amen. When his disciples and other people saw that Jesus was baptizing people, and a lot of people were going to him, they came to John the Baptist, and they came to him, John, unto John and said unto him, Rabbi, he that was with thee beyond Jordan, to whom thou bearest witness, behold, the same baptized, and all men came to him. Verse 27, John answered, and said, a man can receive nothing except it be given him from heaven. Amen. Praise the Lord. John has finished his job. He has introduced Jesus. And Jesus has come to the sea. And people were flocking to Jesus. John's disciples were like, Master, and other people. He said, Yes, that you can only receive power from heaven. As individual, you can do nothing except it's from God. In other words, he's trying to tell them, I've introduced you the one that I told you I'm not even worthy to untie his shoes. He's here. That's why everybody is trooping to him. Amen. If it's me and you flesh, we'll start being jealous. Look at all these people that are coming to us. Now they have shifted base. We will not even want to, to leave because it's like we are happy when people are clapping, when people are cheering us up. That is flesh. Amen. Praise the Lord. 28. You yourself can testify that I said, I am not the Messiah, but I'm sent ahead of him. The bride belongs to the bridegroom. The friend who attends the bridegroom waits and listens for him and is full of joy when he hears the bridegroom's voice. That joy is mine, and it is now complete. 30. He must become greater. I must become less. Amen. He used the analogy of his life in a wedding. The bridegroom has the bride. The groom's men, your own is just to start, start, you know, and be happy that ah, my friend is getting married, you know. And if your friend, by the time you hear them talk and everything, it's like, you are excited that, oh, thank God my friend has finally got married. You give way. That was exactly what John the Baptist did. 
he came, he announced his coming, and when he came, he gave way. That was why he said in verse 30, he must increase, but I must decrease. Yes, I finished my work, I have to leave the sin. Let Christ increase, then I will decrease. By leaving the sin, he has decreased. Amen. Praise the Lord. It's like in an occasion, an ensign will come and talk and talk and talk and make people laugh. By the time he introduces the key speaker or whoever, he doesn't stand there to start talking. He leaves. That was exactly what John the Baptist did. He introduced Jesus, and when Jesus came to the scene, he left. Amen. Praise the Lord. Very well. The one who comes from above is above all. The one who is from the earth belongs to the earth and speaks as one from the earth. The one who comes from heaven is above all. Yes. John the Baptist, all his assignment is earthly, and everything about him is earthly. But Jesus came from heaven, from God. He was conceived by the Holy Spirit. Amen. He's heavenly. So he's different from John the Baptist. Amen. Praise the Lord. John the Baptist has finished his earthly assignment. It's for Jesus to take over. And when it's time, he will return back to his father. Amen. Praise the Lord. He testifies to what he has seen and heard, but no one accepts his testimony. Whoever has accepted it has certified that God is truthful. For the one who he has sent speaks the words of God. For God gives a spirit without limits. 35. The Father loves the Son and has placed everything in his hands. Whoever believes in the Son has eternal life, but whoever rejects the Son will not see life, for God's wrath remains on them. Amen. Amen. We all know, like that, that 34, for he whom God has sent, speak at the words of God, for God has given not the Spirit by measure unto him. 35. The Father loved the Son and had given all things into his hands. We are talking about Jesus. God has given everything into his hands. Verse 36 says, He that loveth, he that believeth on the Son has everlasting life. And he that believeth not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abideth on him. As believers, it's because of Christ, that's why we are here. Because we believe in him, that's why we are here. Anybody that doesn't believe in him is doomed for, for hellfire. Praise the Lord. That's why we are here. We believe in him. We believe in life and his death and resurrection. Amen. Praise the Lord. We are talking about John the Baptist, the forerunner of Christ. He has announced the coming of Christ. He's almost of the sin. Amen. Because Christ has arrived. Mark 6. Mark 1. Mark chapter 1, 6 to 8. Thank you. 
but he shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost. Amen. Praise the Lord. John was straightforward. He said exactly what his mission was. I'm here to prepare to tell you people about Jesus. He's coming. He's somebody. He's the one. He's a child of God. I'm not even worthy to untie his shoes. I am baptizing you people with water, and he will baptize you with Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. He finished his assignment and delivered his assignment perfectly well. Introduction. We all know the story of John the Baptist, how he was conceived. His father, Zachariah, a priest, the wife, Elizabeth, they were old. It's like old, not even expecting a child. Zachariah was in the temple praying when the Holy Ghost, Holy Spirit, angel came to him and told him that your wife, Elizabeth, will, will be carrying a child. Amen. He's like doubted him. How? What do you mean? The angel said, from now until the baby is born, you will be dumb. You can't speak. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. That is why as believers, as disciples of Christ, we shouldn't doubt God. Whatever God says you will do, he is capable of doing it. Amen. Don't start using your human knowledge to say that how. Eventually, the word of God came true. Zachariah was done until John was born. Praise the Lord. Somebody should read the introduction. John the Baptist, a forerunner of the Lord Jesus Christ, was given birth to by aged parents who naturally had passed the age of childbearing. The angel who announced his birth to Zachariah, his father, made it clear that he was not to be Nazareth, one set apart for God's service. He grew up being obedient to God and his parents. He lived a solitary life in the desert and ate locusts and wild honey, and wore a remnant of candles hair. Matthew chapter 3, verse 4. Although John the Baptist did not aim at being wealthy, famous or unique, he was determined to be committed and obedient to God and his word. He was determined from the word go to be obedient to the word of God. He wasn't as happy to the priest. Challenging them to turn from their sins and baptizing them as a symbol of their repentance. Amen. Praise the Lord. John the Baptist knew his assignment. Yes. He wasn't here for anything. It's just to announce, repent. Jesus is coming soon. His sermon was just one sermon. Repentance. Telling people with zeal and even his look, somebody who lived in the desert. It's not like he's, he's a fanciful man, but all he knew was to accomplish his assignment, to announce to everybody, and with his zeal, he was like, people were like, listening, it's like, what is he saying? The same message, 
day in, day out. Amen. Praise the Lord. In his bid to encourage people to embrace repentance, he challenged Herod to admit his sin of illegally getting married to Herodice, his brother's wife. But this offended Herodice, who decided to get rid of the desert preacher. Although she was able to have him killed, she was not able to stop his message. Amen. At this time, the Lord Jesus' ministry had already begun. Amen. John the Baptist was fearless. Whoever you are, he doesn't even care. He was able to tell the king what nobody could tell him. That it's wrong for you to marry your brother's wife. Amen. That angered the brother's wife. And from that day, he started planning, plotting how to get rid of John the Baptist. But all the same, John the Baptist has done what he's supposed to have done. Amen. He has already introduced Jesus. And the whole world, the whole people around, they have caught up with the message. It's like they are gravitating to Jesus. Because Jesus has almost come to the sea. So Herod's wife was able to kill him, but he wasn't able to stop the gospel. Amen. John the Baptist was able to accomplish his mission Amen. before he was killed. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. God's wisdom really comes out in this, this character of John because he did keep him separate from the world for a reason. And one of those reasons were he had no ties to the world, so he could tell you anything. He didn't have to worry about repercussion because he didn't he, he didn't even favor him. He didn't get the food from you, he didn't get his clothes from you, he had no political power. He was simply a messer of your God. He was a sin pointer. If you did so wrong, it was this. And one of the things that the Lord gave him wisdom is that the Lord showed me this. Every time he answers somebody, it's with the word of God. Yes. Well, who are you? And he just gave the message of the Lord. Mm -hmm. He spoke with the message. If you speak with the God's word, it's always with power and authority because it's from God. There was no, no reason for him to slip. They couldn't take his words and turn around on him. He spoke simply the message. Amen. He didn't go outside that. Amen. 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 He was focused on the message. Amen. And since he was living in the wilderness, he has nothing to do with the world. Yeah. Not that the government or the king will bribe him so that he won't say what he's supposed to say. Amen. No! He was fearless. He was able to talk to anybody. If you are wrong, he will tell you you are wrong. Amen. Praise the Lord. John had accomplished his mission. God had given each of us a purpose for living. God, John the Baptist did not have complete Bible as we know it today, but he focused his life on the truth he knew from the available Old Testament scriptures. Likewise, we can discover in God's word the truths he wants us to know. As these truths work in us, others will be drawn to him. God can use you in a way that he can use no one else. Let him know your willingness to follow him today. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. As believers, as disciples of God, we all have assignments. God has given each and every one of us assignments to do. My assignment will not be the same assignment with you. Even couples, different assignments. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. That from the study of John the Baptist, he stick to his, his assignment. It's not like he knows the Bible from Genesis to Revelation. As believers, as disciples of God, I can't go out to talk to people. I don't know Genesis to Revelation. I don't know what to tell them. What did John the Baptist see is preaching every day, all through the period Jesus is coming. Amen. Repent. Yeah. The kingdom of God is at hand. Amen. And people had him, people believed him. He will kept baptizing people. Amen. Amen. As disciples, let us go out. Even if it's just John 3:16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. Go out there, tell people. When they come to you, 
Even if you don't know what to tell them, you'll see your life, your testimony. I used to drink. I used to be on the streets. But God delivered me. Amen. They say, you mean it? Yes. yes. You will draw men, you will draw women Amen. unto Christ. Most of us, we want to study the Bible, cram it before we go out. No! John the Baptist stood. He stuck to his message and that's it. Praise the Lord. Amen. Lesson objectives. The objectives of this study are one, to examine the distinguishing character of John the Baptist. Two, to understand the reasons for his total commitment to his ministry. Three, to highlight the significance of John the Baptist in John 3.30. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Bible truth. What are the distinguishing qualities of John the Baptist? The qualities that distinguished John the Baptist from every other preacher, from every other person. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. There are many characteristics that differentiated John the Baptist from many preachers. He was conceived by revelation and was given birth to by aged parents. When Angel Gabriel told Zechariah his father about the conception of birth, he doubted and became dumb at the word of the angel until the promise was fulfilled. Luke 1, 5-20 His birth was predicted in Isaiah 43 and Malachi 4, 5 years before he was born. He lived in the desert and ate locusts and wild honey and wore a remnant of camel's hair. Matthew 3, 4 his message was directed to all kinds of people. He preached to the people fearlessly. He was truthful in his preaching and fulfilled his calling. He reproved the king in Luke 3.19 and warned the soldiers in Luke 3.14. He was not afraid of people or the government of those days. He did not sing the praise of government. He was not a respecter of personalities. He fearlessly preached direct and uncompromising messages to the people and gave this to them confidence to go to him for baptism. Worldliness was not in his character, and wherever he was, people always saw him. Even when he called them, them names, they still saw him. He was entrusted with the mission of preparing the way of the Lord Jesus Christ. He did, he did no miracle, John 10, 41. Although he was human, he did not allow himself to be controlled by the emotions of the flesh. The Lord Jesus Christ commented and called him a burning and shining light in John 5.35. Yet he was beheaded by King Herod at the request of King Herodias in Matthew 14.3, Mark 6.17. Indeed, John the Baptist was unique in character in his own way. Amen. And this led the unique character of John the Baptist from other preachers. He was conceived by revelation and was given birth to aged parents. We all know about it. Even when the angel ministered to the father, the priest Zechariah, he doubted him and he became dumb. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. He lived in the desert and ate locusts and wild honey. Wore remnants of camel's hair. His message was directed to all kinds of people. He wasn't looking at places, whether you are king, whether you are priest, whether you are soldiers, whether you are government. He doesn't care because nobody is feeding him. He doesn't have allegiance to anybody. He lived in the desert. He doesn't pay bills. He doesn't have rent to pay. So he doesn't need all these our worldly things. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Unlike these days, that pastors, governments will be pastors, preachers, yeah. money to muffle their mouth. Amen. They can't even speak the truth because of the money they have collected. John the Baptist was unique. All he did was to say exactly what he came to do. Preach about Jesus. Tell the world that somebody is coming that will baptize you with fire. I am baptizing you with just water. 
And people saw that he was fearless. Amen. That's why people were gravitating to him. Even when we saw the king in truth, they felt this preacher that can tell the king the truth about his wife. He is genuine. People were flocking to him and were repenting and he was baptizing them. He did the work perfectly well. Yes. So today, it's a food of thought, food for thought for each and every one of us. Amen. What is my assignment? Am I fulfilling my assignment? If you leave your assignment and you have been somebody else's assignment, you will not be rewarded for it. Amen. Amen. Most of the time, we will pray and fast and pray. No, answers to our prayers is our God-given assignment. Amen. Praise the Lord. So, after reading this topic, when you get home, read it together with your family. All the Bible passages, read it. Pray so that God will open your eyes to your God-given assignment. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. God from the beginning separated him, obviously, and he was a self-sufficient person. He knew how to survive. Yes. So he didn't depend on mommy and daddy. And where he gets this boldness from, if you're living out in the wilderness, you're fighting off animals, you're fighting wolves and bears, and what is a person you have to deal with stuff like that for your whole life? You don't know shelter, you have, you're being rained on, the sun is hitting you. He must have looked a lot like what we would, like almost like a homeless person today. He knew nothing about fashion. A characteristic about him, it said a remnants of camel hair. When you find remnants, it's not something you hunted. It's something that he found. He was able to utilize what he had. He chopped the skill up. He made a belt. He wrapped it around him. He was a very plain guy, but he did stand out because there was no one that could identify, hey, those are Calvin Klein shoes he has on there. So he, he was living off the remnants of things that he found. Yes. He yes. didn't need anybody for anything yes. except for God. And God gave him the locusts and the honey and all. He wasn't a guy who didn't want steak dinners. He didn't want lobster tails. He, he was just a, a basic, very rude, not a rude guy, but he was like boldness because he knew nothing. When you're dependent on God and you have to fight off bears for the honey and you have to fight a wolf, you, have to, you become a, sh a strong character. Amen. And, 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 and you don't yes. know anybody anything. Yes. You have no ties to the world. The king can't. The king he can't even tempt you with his his food and drink because you're not even. You don't have the tongue for it. If you don't eat sugar for a month straight, you lose the taste for it. When you go to taste that sugar, it tastes terrible to you. So all the things that he had were just the necessities of life, and it teaches us a lesson not to be worried about worldly things, not not worldly people, not owe favors to people, especially people of the world. Amen. 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 That is one one of the distractions believers have. Worldliness. That thank God for John the Baptist. That he wasn't worldly. He wasn't depending on anybody. That was why he was able to speak the truth. And people were calling him, and the desert man is coming. They recognized him. Amen. Even the way he was. They were still going to him. Amen. Amen. To listen to what he has to say. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Question. Okay, brother. God bless you, Mom. Um, just to add to what Brother Bill just said. Um, I mean, if you look at the churches today, um, it's just like like how John the Baptist was, how he was able to, you know, point people, tell them of their sin. For them to repent. Um, I mean, how can that help us? Because, like you said, he is a fall, like a forerunner of Jesus. So he was able to lead people to Jesus. So there was no compromise with the things of this world. Amen. So how? I mean, we saw that the church have been have been compromised yes. by by the leaders not telling people what they're doing, like John the Baptist. And um, I mean, John the Baptist, like, you know, sometimes you tell someone 
what he's doing is right, they could fight you back. Like Herod had to kill him for you know for what he did, um, for you know for voicing what that Herod you know married his um, his brother, killed his brother, and married the wife. So I mean that's to me. Like, so how do we know? Like you know, I, I mean how you know to like I separate John the Baptist from the ministry of John the Baptist. I tell you some of Mr. A, you are a sinner. That is John the Baptist. But the ministry is for him to know Jesus. Amen. For Mr. A to know Jesus. So, but now it comes to our wisdom for us to know, like, I'm not supposed to just tell you that you're a sinner. You know, like, like John the Baptist. Because that could rebel. You could rebel too. Like, why are you calling me a, a sinner. So how do you show love, you know, for you, you know, for people to be able to follow you now? You see how Jesus' ministry was different from the ministry of John the Baptist. You lead people to sin, but how do they follow you after they've received that message that you, you left something with them, not for them to rebel against what you're teaching them? Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise God. Their own mission. Amen. John the Baptist just did exactly what he has to do without any connection to the world or worldliness. And God did it in such a way. That was God's plan because God knows that they need somebody that will be focused to introduce Jesus to the world. If God has used just anybody, they will be carried away. Amen. God decided to use Elizabeth's womb. He reserved that womb for John the Baptist to be the forerunner of Christ. Amen. And he did it in such a way that nobody else could have been able to do it. Amen. And definitely, Zachariah, being a priest, must have come to the son, even how his conception came about, that he doubted the angels. Please, and I was gone. Please, make sure you don't doubt God. Whatever God says you will do, he will do it. Amen. I'm sure the Father told him everything. Amen? Yeah. That's why he told, you know, it was just his mission to prepare the way. And he doesn't care in that way. Jesus came. He's like, he's done. He did no miracles according to the Bible. And yet, Jesus described him as a shining. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Question two. How long does one need to prepare for the takeoff of his ministry? How long? It depends. Everybody had their own time. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Like we are going to read, Moses had his own time. David, even when he was anointed, it's not like he anointed him, he ran straight to the palace. Everybody, there is time to prepare. Amen. There is time for preparation. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. The period needed for the takeoff of the ministry of an individual called of God to carry out a specific assignment depends on some factors which include the nature of the ministry. God's timing and purpose, the nature of any ministry, depends on what God wants to achieve through it. And this will in turn determine whether it's going to be urgent or not. When God called Moses to deliver the Israelites from bondage in Egypt, he immediately swung into action after failing to conceive God that he, Moses, was unable to accomplish the task. The Israelites have been in bondage for 400 years, and it was time for God to deliver them through Moses. When David was anointed king of Israel, he had to wait for the appropriate time, God's time, to ascend the throne. However, when God demanded that Paul and Barnabas be separated unto him for a specific purpose, they immediately went to fulfill that purpose without wasting any time. The birth of John the Baptist as a forerunner of Christ was predicted in Malachi 4.5. When he was born, he grew up to maturity before fulfilling his ministry. This period of growth up to the, to the maturity and readiness for the fulfillment 
of his ministry was his time of preparation. Finally, it is important to note that the spiritual state of readiness of the individual called by God to perform a specific assignment can also affect the time it took off of a ministry. Amen. It depends on the assignment God has given you. Like we read here, Moses, when God called Moses, his own assignment was urgent because the children of Israel, they've been in bondage and they've been crying unto God. Immediately after Moses finished arguing with God, I cannot speak, I cannot do this, I cannot do that. God told him what he has to do and he took off immediately. His assignment started immediately. When David was anointed, he didn't run to the fathers. It took him a while, you know, he went back to the forest to take care of the sheep and he was trained when the bear came, when the lion came, everything. There is period for training depending on your assignment. Amen. When God, when the Holy Spirit demanded that Paul and Barnabas be separated unto him for a specific purpose, it was done right away. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Every assignment like that of John the Baptist, it was predicted before he was born. And he, they lived on him and he started preparing the way for Christ. Amen. It took time for him to grow up. His parents nurtured him and everything. That was his training period. When it's time, he did the work. So for me and you, whatever assignment God has given to us, there is period for training, depending on the assignment. If it's an assignment that is supposed to take off immediately, you will know the Holy Spirit. God doesn't give information up and up. He will tell you, you will know. Amen. The Holy Spirit will be ministering to you. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. It's like John the Baptist. He never met Jesus. That he was ministered, that the one that the dove will descend upon. That is Jesus. That was why how he recognized Jesus. And he knew that his time is done. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. The final this the final passage here says finally it is important to know that the spiritual state of readiness of the individual called by God to perform a specific assignment can also affect the time of takeoff of a ministry. So it depends. Amen. Amen. Your call might be urgent. Mine might take a long time. It's our duty to watch and pray. Listen out when God speaks. God, God speaks to us in dreams and vision. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Question three. What are the reasons for his total commitment? What were the reasons for his total commitment? From the onset of his ministry on earth, John the Baptist knew and fully understood the importance of his mission. This was reflected in his personal testimony to the priests and Levites, who were detailed by the Jews in Jerusalem to inquire who he is. He said, I am the voice of the one crying out in the wilderness. Make straight the way of the Lord. John 1, 1, 23. In Luke 3, verse 6, he added that all the flesh shall see the salvation of God. No wonder he stirred up the hearts of his listeners to repent, for the kingdom of the Lord is at hand. Matthew 2, 4, and 17. As a son of a priest, his father must have brought him up in fear and adamation of the, of the Lord, teaching him to be faithful and totally committed to God's command and instruction. Also, his father must have narrated the circumstances surrounding his birth to him, warning him against the dangers of doubting God's word. The solitary and prayerful life he lived in the wilderness in the wilderness must have helped him to be focused and purposeful in fulfilling his ministry as Christ's forerunner. 
He was determined to be will of God and not to compromise his word, no matter the cost. This made him to resolve that Christ must increase while he decreased. Amen. 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 From all we have said today, we know that John the Baptist was focused. And his father, being a priest, brought him up well, nurtured him to be committed to the word of God, being obedient to the word of God. As parents, grandparents, it's our duty to nurture our children, Amen. our grandchildren, to tell them the importance of being obedient to the word of God, taking instruction from God, not deviating from the word of God. It is very important. Thank God for Zachariah and his wife Elizabeth. They must have talked to their son. They must have told him the circumstances of his birth. And knowing fully well that his job is very, very crucial to prepare the way, the coming of the Lord. And he stood to this assignment. He never deviated. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And living in the desert, there is no distraction, there is no TV to watch, there is no Instagram and all whatnot. He was focused. Amen. His only work is to pray. All he was doing when he's hungry to get his food eat and continue to pray. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And this made him resolve that Christ must increase while he decreases. Amen. Amen. Immediately Christ came to the scene. He knew it's time for him to leave the scene. And that was exactly what he did. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Question 4. What is the significance of John's statement in John 3.30? in the life of the believer. Amen. When the disciples of John the Baptist came to him to inform him that the Lord Jesus Christ was baptizing people, he reminded them that he had told them that he was not Christ and that he was already he was he already testified of the Christ. He also told them that his work was to prepare the way for the Messiah and that he is filled with joy to hear his success. Amen. Then he concluded by saying, he must increase, but I must decrease. Amen. When John's disciples came to him to tell him that Jesus is baptizing people, he said, but I told you people from the onset, I am not Christ. That Jesus is coming, the Messiah. And he is here. He wasn't jealous. If some, if it's some people, yeah. when the disciples came to tell him, they would have been jealous that you told him. He told the disciples, I've been telling you people from the word go, I am not. I am here to prepare the way for the Messiah. And he is here. That is the more reason why I have to decrease for him to increase. For him to decrease is for him to leave the scene. Let Jesus take over. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. John's willingness to decrease in importance and bow out for the Lord Jesus Christ to fulfill his ministry shows an unusual humility. It's unusual humility. Amen. Most of us, most of the preachers, even when they know that it's time for them to retire, they don't even want to leave. They want to remain there because of all the clapping, all the applause and everything. No, but John the Baptist, he did his work and he knew, yes, it's time to leave when the ovation is loudest and he left. Amen. It's unusual humility. Yeah. Amen. Praise the Lord. Brother Bill, you wanted to say something. You just you just said it, but okay. it's like it's like somebody that you started a company from the ground up. You started it. 
But the whole time that you started, you said, this is going to be Jesus' company. But you worked your whole life, the workers, the, every, everything you did from the ground up, your whole life, you were so dedicated to this. And then one day, Jesus just comes and you says, okay, you're done. You can go now. Without even hesitating, you just turn around and you walk away. That takes a special man, a special uh, humbleness. He didn't have any attachment. Oh, this is mine. Yes. His whole mission was for him. The one he named it from from the beginning. He never attached himself to any of it. The only thing he attached himself was, was to his dedication. But as soon as Christ came, he kneeled down and said, it is yours. Let me walk away. And his happiness was that his mission was a success. Yes. It was fulfilled. That was his two joy. Yes. To yes. see his brother succeed. Yes. Now we have we should learn from that in the ministry. God can anoint you anything. And there's going to be people that are under you that are someday going to be above you. And not above Ooh. in that way, but they, they, God may take them somewhere. Instead of being like, oh, who does this guy think he is? You're supposed to say, thank you, Jesus. You used me to guide and lead him, and I was going to take off and butt like a farmer that watches the, the seed grow. He doesn't get mad when it starts producing other fruits. He's happy. He's joyful about it. Amen? Amen. That's Amen. true. When you see your brother, your sister progressing, overtaking you, you know, it's like, it's supposed to be a thing of joy. Amen. It's like you said, it's one that just came to the ministry yesterday. You meet him, he's doing this, he's doing No! You have to praise God for him or her that he or she is available for God to use them. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. He was not jealous of Christ when he heard that he was also baptizing people. Rather, he was filled with joy that the people are getting to know the Messiah. Amen. He was excited that the people are getting to know the Messiah that he has come to introduce. Some people will be angry yeah. that he was happy and introduced him to the world. And the world are getting to know him. They are accepting him. It's a thing of joy. Amen. Praise the Lord. How many pastors or Christian leaders are willing to quit the scene and bow out to someone else when they know that they have fulfilled their mission and they are becoming more popular? How many? How many will want to quit the scene? It's just the wrong ones. Amen? Amen. And there are not too many. Thank God for John the Baptist. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Many would like to continue in their ministry, whether they are making impact or not. But it is better to quit the scene when the ovation is loudest for the individual believer. The statement, he must increase, but I must decrease, should mean playing down one's self-exaltation and the manifestation of self and the works of flesh in order for God's spirit to give full expression of him in us. When we come to this point, our focus will be to manifest God's glory in everything we do. Amen. Amen. He must increase, but I must decrease. To me, laying down one's exaltation and the manifestation of self and the works of flesh in order for God's spirit to give full expression of himself in us. It's like if you if you are doing something in the house of God and it's like people are applauding you and you are like, hey, give back the glory to God. The moment you start saying, it's me, ah, I did this, I did that. That's not right. Amen. Return it back to God. Tell the people, it's God. It's God that did it. I didn't do it. I'm only a vessel. Amen? As believers, we must decrease and let God increase in Amen. us. Amen. Praise the Lord. Daily living application. Believers can learn a lot from the unique way John the Baptist carried out his God-given assignment. He was called of God to be the forerunner of Christ, to announce his coming, 
and to call on people to repent of their evil ways. His commitment and dedication is carried out. His commitment and dedication is carrying out his task is worthy of commendation and believers are encouraged to emulate him. His style of living may be out of tune with present day living standard, but he was contented and carried out his task with zeal Amen. and zest is worthy of emulation. Amen. Of emulation. Yes. His lifestyle, living in the desert. For now, you know, most of us, we can't do it. But his commitment, that's what we will take from him. His commitment, we should emulate him. He was committed. He didn't deviate from what he was sent to do. Amen. He did not leave introducing Christ and introducing himself. Like most people, when they were asking him, are you Messiah? He can say no. Are you a prophet? He'll say yes. But he said, no, I'm not Messiah. I'm not the prophet. I'm yes. not Elisha. Amen. I am the forerunner of Christ. Yes. He told them exactly what he was. Amen. Amen. Yes. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Really quickly, right after you made that statement, that I'm to decrease so he increase. The two men that were talking to him, he told, there goes the way, there goes the truth and the life. They left him, John. Yes. And those became the Jesus. first two of Jesus' disciples. Yes, yes. So the statement was a prophetic word. Go. He, Go, and, yes. And then they asked, who are you? He goes, they even called Rabbi, who are you? He goes, yes. I'm a rabbi, I'm the one. And they just followed him. Amen. It, yes. Amen. Yes, amen. they were the first John's disciples that came to report to him that he is baptizing people and they are following him. He said, yes, that's the Messiah. Yes. They are the first set of disciples of Jesus. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. His commitment to his calling and his high level of performance without compromising his faith should be emulated in order to win the world for Christ. Amen. We are not supposed to from the word of God. Amen. We are supposed to tell people the truth. We are not supposed to be looking at faces. Praise the Lord. John the Baptist wasn't the respecter of any person. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Believers in general and preachers of the gospel in particular should emulate John's time of preaching fearlessly and uncompromised uncompromising to people irrespective of their social status and position in government. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. We shouldn't be looking at people's faces or compromising that. It's a minister. Speak the word. Amen. Amen. Whoever is in the congregation, just speak the word. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Memory verse. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. 